Be in this world as if you are a stranger, a wayfarer. You think you want the dunya, so you run behind it, but you will never get it. And you turn away from it and it runs behind you. Husbands are out of the home 24-7. So we have broken homes as well. And they know more about Ghanaian style and the Harlem shape than they know about any shayuk. The leaders of the Muslims are being shunted away. Destroy the leadership, you got nothing. Now we must ask ourselves, is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of us? We are downtrodden and we can't seem as a group of people to make a coherent or a cohesive stance or a unity to be seen as an ummah or a community within this wider society in Great Britain. What do I mean in other words? If we were to look at ourselves, we would see. And we would understand that when it comes to matters that affect us, we don't have a voice. And those of our leaders who voice things out, the Mashaikh, the Shuyuk, they have been targeted one by one and been called extremists or being called mutatarrif or being called uh, terrorists or preachers of hate or what have you. You know it better than we do because this is the situation. So Imams, Shuyuk, their lips are sealed. Everyone is scared. Then members of our secular leadership and it shouldn't be that we as Muslims have secular leadership but members of our leadership they say and do things and it seems as if it's against they themselves are against Islam we know in the recent uh, the recent past where we had this same-sex marriages things being brought up members of our leadership said, let them have that, and let them go for it, and let's do that, and what not. The Muslims as a whole tried in some ways to what? Say some things, try to do some things, try to address the issues, but really, all the wider community looks on us as are people who are playing the benefit system, being scroungers and cheats, being people who don't have an opinion, and largely being a ghetto, a ghetto set of people. So we live in the community, but we make no contribution to it. And I'm not saying that that might be true. I'm just saying this is what the idea is, or what it looks like as far as we're concerned. And we look in. Many people have said, our MPs, have done wrong. We look inward to ourselves and we would see as well. If we look at the successful Muslim businessman, the successful Muslim businessman is running off license. Their business is based on haram. The people who have or who seem to be having, who are chasing this dunya, are people who are doing what is against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered. We look and we see that we are not only selling alcohol, we are not only involved in riba, but those of us who are involved in substance abuse, such as the cigarette and the cat, yeah. and, the, and, the, and, and the drugs, this is what we are doing. Husbands are out of the home 24-7, so we have broken homes as well. And what do we expect from our wives who are running the show, from women who are running with five, six or eight children in the household, what do we expect? The children don't have great role models. No role models. The wives themselves, they are frustrated. They are frustrated. So they are looking also to the dunya. And looking also to what they can get from, 
from the situation that presents itself daily. So, our leadership is fractitious. Our leadership is not cohesive. Our leadership is incoherent. Men, as far as they're concerned, are running down the dunya. They are, in fact, what the head of the household, and they are not doing their jobs. If it is that they are only doing business and not taking care of the family, women who are left to take care of the family are themselves failing in that duty. And let's look at our youths. Masha Allah, the youth is the focus and the hope of every community. Why would we look at our youth? Our youths are in gangs, they're in drugs, they are a product of the broken home. What they are seeing is the music, the iPad, the um, video generation and plays and games. And they know more about Ghanaian style and the Harlem Sheikh than they know about any Shuyukh or the, sh the Sheikh that they're supposed to know. Our daughters are out on the street, pregnant, illicit uh, relationships, and facing a slew of activities that no good Muslim would want to even hear about. But this is the truth and this is the situation that we find ourselves in. Now we must ask ourselves, is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of us? Come with me as we just take a review of some ayat of Quran about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of us. And I'm not here to say that you are wrong. I'm not here to say that I by like. I'm not here to say that it is your fault. Rather, I'm here to say to you, my darling brother, my darling sister, I'm here to say to you, let's look at our situation, do our muhasaba, and if we find that our lives is not in conformity with what it should be, then let's resolve within ourselves to change that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further continues. Hmm? وَعَدَ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Allah has promised those of you who have belief those of you who have belief and do أعمال الصالحات the good deeds that he will make them the inheritors and the rulers of the earth لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ the scroungers? No. Benefit streets? No. The person who's running after the dunya? No. لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِ ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish the deen which he is chosen for them, what he subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for them. Which deen is that? You get no points for answering. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu raditu lakum al-islama deenan That is the deen that Allah will establish. Is it established now? Is it established in our life? We need to think about that. وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا And Allah will change their situation. The situation that we are in. The alim cannot stand and talk. Your sheikh cannot stand and talk. The leaders of the Muslims cannot stand and talk because right away he's branded. This is an extremist. This one is a what? Is a, is a Nirhabi or terrorist. That one is a pre hater, hate, preach, preacher of hate or whatever they call it. And so... The, the leaders of the Muslims are being shunted away. Destroy the leadership, you got nothing. Destroy your sila, what comes between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you got nothing. Subhanallah. So, he will do what? Yubaddilanna lahum. What will he do? He will change khawfihim amna to their state of fear into that of peace, security, calmness. And I'm asking you by Allah, are we a people who are living in fear? 
or are we calm or are we seeing the khairat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا These people, you the Muslims, we the Muslims will be worshipping Allah not ascribing partners to Him It's easy for anyone to come in and say, I worship Allah. But what about the ascribing partners to Him? We think that the risk comes from the shop. We think that um, we can put up halal in the shop and say we're selling halal and then we, we throw in a, one of those slot machines or one of those gambling machines in there. And you say, but you see everything is still halal, but this one is for if anyone wants something else, they can use here and I can still get the money. No, that my brother is a part of shirk also. Yeah? We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَغْنِنَا يَعْنِي أَغْنِنَا بِفَضْلِكَ عَمَّنْ سِوَا وَكْفِنَا بِحَلَالِكَ عَنْ حَرَامِكَ Make your halal just sufficient for us that we did not need to go to haram. But you are saying no. You see I have to sell this, this I have to sell the haram things so that I can get more money. Is your maqsab, do you think this is yani, following the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you think this is not also ascribing partners to him in that you, you have created your own law? Think about it my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. Within the same, within the same situation of that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعَدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ The people who disbelieve after that. These are the ones who are the, the transgressors. These are the ones who are not the religious ones. These are the unrighteous ones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, perhaps amongst you, perhaps amongst you Muslims, are people who look to the disbelievers. And you think, well, they are enjoying life. Why shouldn't we enjoy? They have it all. Why shouldn't we have? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تحسبن الذين كفروا معجزين في الأرض. Don't think that the people who disbelieve, these are the ones they are going to escape. They they got the whole world so they they are going to escape. Don't think they'll escape. وما وهم النار. Their final repose is the hellfire. ولا بأس المصير. And that is the worst place to be. The words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Go back, check it up, read on it, look at the tafsir on it, and reflect on it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions to us what He wants of us in this life. Mentions to us what He wants. He says to you, my Muslim brother, He says to you, my sister, He says to us, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَا وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ To say that I know that all of my prayer, all of my worship, salati, wanusuki, and all of my sacrificing, لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ They are for Allah. They are not for anyone else. For Allah. Who has no partner, this is what I am asked to do and I'm of the, the first or the foremost of those people to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His laws and what He wants from me. Let's consider that. Because many of us would like to think that we are indeed doing the work of Allah and that we want, to, we want Allah to be pleased with us. But Allah requires a certain level of commitment from people in their deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in uh, Surah An-Nisa, he mentions, فَلْيَقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يَشْرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا بِالْآخِرَةِ If you want to go in the path of Allah, if you want to struggle in the path of Allah, if you are interested in Kital فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ then it is only for such person who has battered this life for the next. This is not for any Johnny come lately, and it is not for one who is halfway here and halfway there, and he has got amal ani khair, mal amal amal ani shar, and he has got uh, dubious, dodgy things. 
فليقاتل في سبيل الله الذين يشرون الحياة الدنيا بالآخرة. That's it. You've bought the, the hereafter with the dunya. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us as much. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us as much. He used to say to his companions, one time he put his arm around one of them and he said to them, Kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharib. Abir is sabil. Be in this world as if you are a stranger, a wayfarer. And I'm wondering, you know, which stranger in the world puts up a house? Which wayfarer who's traveling, between traveling and stopping at the Mahatta, all of the station, decides he's going to beautify the place and turn it into something else? No wayfarer in their right mind is doing that. So this is what he says we should be like in this dunya. And he mentions two types of people to us. He, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi, says, he said, Man asbaha wahamuhu dunya farraqa allahu alayhi shamlahu farraqa allahu alayhi shamlahu wajala faqrahu bayna aynayhi wa la yanalu min ad-dunya illa ma kataba allahu lahu the words of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he says Whomsoever sees the morning or wakes up or gets up and their main concern is the dunya, Allah destroys their effort. Their effort has no barakah. You know your shamal and all the things are what you, you put together and what you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not bring his or her projects together. وَجَعَلَ فَقْرَهُ بَيْنَ عَيْنَيْهِ And that person will indeed see poverty. You want the world? You're going to see poverty. وَلَا يَنَالُ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ And they will not get anything from the world except what was written for them. Do you think how long you chase the world you'll get more? No, my brother. No, my sister. It's never going to happen like that. And conversely, bil'aq, huh? in the opposite, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger tells us about another person. وَمَنْ أَصْبَحَ وَحَمُّهُ الْآخِرَةِ This is you, insha'Allah. This is me, insha'Allah. This is all the believing men and women. مَنْ أَصْبَحَ وَحَمُّهُ الدُّنْيَا Whomsoever woke up, saw the morning, hmm? whomsoever at the beginning of their day, was concerned with the Akhirah. Jama'a Allahu alayhi shamlahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes all of their projects and situations and what they have to come together. Jama'a Allahu alayhi shamlahu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger also mentioned وَآتَتُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَةً And the dunya comes, comes to that person and that per, uh, the dunya is subjugated. So, وَمَنْ أَصْبَحَ وَحَمُّهُ الْآخِرَةً جَمَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ شَمْلَهُ وَجَعَلَ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that person a certain satisfaction in the heart and gives that person a sense of peacefulness and security. And the dunya comes to that person in a debased way. Follows the person. It's counterintuitive. You think you want the dunya so you run behind it but you will never get it. And you turn away from it and it runs behind you. Think about that. Okay, having said that, having said that, what is our situation? How can we, who have been tried by this dunya, how can we pass this empty hand? 
for this test and become better Muslims. Because obviously you're weighing it up now and everyone is weighing it up now and you're thinking, where am I? Where am I from this? Yeah? So we're looking at this. And we're thinking, okay, hands up. We've been running after this dunya. We shouldn't have that uh, and we shouldn't be doing that. But there is a bigger problem. We're going to stop running after the dunya, no problem. We have got the wrong heroes. We have got the wrong role models. We have got the wrong idea about what we should be doing in life. So, when our men look and they think that it's okay to be successful, we do anything to be successful, that, that's a problem. And when our women look and they think that it's okay to be a supermodel, or it's okay to be um, chasing after the dunya, that's a problem. Because then they forget their true purpose in life. So let's look at what these and what our role models should be for the ladies. My darling sister, hmm? you think you've gotten a raw deal because culturally your husband oppresses you, culturally uh, he abuses you, culturally you got cultural baggages, so you think you, the Muslims are doing you a wrong deal. But I have news for you, my darling sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to keep your own name. You know, you get married here in this country and you're Mrs. So and So, but in Allah's book, you are so the daughter of so and so. You've got your own name. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his sharia has seen to it that you have your own wealth. You have your own wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has seen to it that you get your own portion of inheritance and you keep it too. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees to it that no matter what you earn, your husband has to provide for you. This is Allah's sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you not an object of, uh, of desire or objectification as they have done in the West, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you a pillar and a builder of the society that you are a part of. And what did you do? What are you doing? Let's look at some of these pillars in the society. I ask you, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa alayhi salam. The Prophet Musa, his life was a success built by women. His mother was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His sister ran after him and saw that he was returned to the household. The wife of Fir'aun pleaded on his behalf for Fir'aun to what? To, to take him into her home. Surrounded by women. The life of the Prophet وسلم, was a success by women. Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha gave herself and her wealth and all that she had for this deen. The, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, Umm Salama, she gave him counsel which at one time after the treaty of Hudaybiyah, his uh, companions were having doubts in their hearts about what to do. She counseled him, mashaAllah. The household of the Prophet ﷺ, his wives were women who gave out the sunnah and the ahadith and the fiqh that we, you and I study to this day. Women, our deen is a success of women. And our sisters, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tahreem. Hmm? He says, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah has made a parable or a similitude or a parallel or He has given an example to people who believe. Not women who believe, people who believe, both men and women. Imra'at of Fir'aun, the wife of Fir'aun, is called, Rabbi ibn li andaka baitan fil jannah. When she said, Oh God, oh Allah, build for me a palace for you in uh, uh, for me next with you in Jannah. وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Four people who believe, yeah? 
Save me from Pharaoh and his actions and save me from the bad people. And I wonder which of our leaders today can say, save me from the bad people. Uh, but you're saying, this is my job, brother, so I have to toe the party line. It is my job, brother, I have to do this. I've, I've, we say to you, didn't, didn't you not know? La ta'atil makhluqat fi ma'asiyatil khaliq. Didn't you not know that there is no way that you can, you can obey the creation over that, the, the laws of the creator? So when you say, I'm selling these things and I'm doing these things, check yourself. وَنَجْنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And Allah further goes on. وَمَرْيَمَ بَنَتَ عِمْرَانِ Maryam, the daughter of Imran. أَلَّتِي أَحْسَنَتْ فَرْجَحَ Who was that woman who is عِفَّت? Who was that woman who is modest and chaste? To show women that that's how you need to be. To show women. Men! And women, you run out, you, you don't have a father, you don't have a mother, you, you, you have broken homes and you think you, you're just not doing anything. We are suffering as a people. And we are supposed to be the vicegerents who are supposed to bring Islam to non-Muslims. That ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen if, if you don't have the taqwa of Allah and if you're not aware of these things. My brothers and sisters, there are many things I want to say. And I know that the time does not permit. So I would stop here. I'm not finished. I would stop here. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, that He makes you and He makes me get a perfect understanding of what our duties should be as Muslims. That He subhanahu wa ta'ala give us leaders who He can strengthen them with truth and He can strengthen the truth with them. That He subhanahu wa ta'ala give us such families that would be beacons of guidance to the non-Muslims. Because believe me, if you think that non-Muslims are successful, they are not. Yeah. They, they, their lives are empty. They commit suicide daily. They, uh, they want to look for a, a, a success in their life. And they want to look for solutions. The problem is the Muslims are not showing that solution. You've got it. But you're not showing it. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He can use us as a means to bring guidance to the non-Muslims. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal our hearts, to get out the hub dunya from our hearts and out of the lives of our wives and children and make us people who concentrate only on Him and trying to gain the hereafter. It does not mean that we leave off the earth. It does not mean that we leave off that. No. It means that our major concern is that we know that one day we will be leaving here and that we prepare for that and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I, I say it's the best in Arabic uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yurikum ma yurdikum fil, fi awladikum fil hayat dunya wal akhira that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show you things that will please you in your family and your children in this life and in the next Ameen I say this word wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen